A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. Christianity is charity. And our identity is love. At the sunset of our lives, we will only be judged according to love. Jesus comes to us in the sacrament. Jesus comes to us as the Word. Jesus comes to us through the ministers of the church. Jesus comes to us through this gathering, this assembly that we have. But most of all, Jesus comes to us through the poor. The poor are the favorites of the, of the Lord. And when the Lord visited us and came to us in flesh and blood, He came to us as a poor man. He did not associate Himself with the rich and the powerful because it was when He was most powerless, when He was most weak, when he was most abandoned and downtrodden, that he reached the climax, the peak of his love for us. We will be judged according to love. But how do we love? The traditional way of loving is by almsgiving, giving charitably. Somebody is in need and then we offer help. Maybe food, maybe money. Sometimes, when the calamity is great, that we give even more. Clothes, mats, food, water, all of these are given as an act of charity. That is why our charitable institution in the church is called Caritas, which is charity, which is love. But charity invites us to go higher than that. What if there is no calamity? What if we start to ask the question, what can we do in order to help them live up to their dignity as children of God? So, in the words of Pope Paul VI, the new name of peace is development. There can be no true peace without development. And if I may extend, I'd say charity also urges us to promote total human development. Total human development, which means not ignoring the soul, but total human development, which also means promoting the dignity of man. The dignity of man, which means we are brothers and sisters. The dignity which says God redeemed us by His blood, by His death and resurrection. Charity also requires us to be brothers and sisters who promote the development of our brothers and sisters by cooperative programs, by livelihood projects, by education. But beyond development, there is still the higher goal, which is liberation. Because true love sets us free. True love through charity, through caritas, must be liberational. And it is time for us to ask the question, what can we do for the poor? But it is also good to ask the question, why are they poor? Because there are structures of sin. There are structures of abuse. There are structures that use people instead of loving them. And it is our duty, out of Christian charity, to dismantle those structures of sin that prevent human beings from living up to their dignity as children of God. When we were seminarians, we had an immersion program with a group of sisters working with farmers in a faraway village. And... Uh, they 
lived with the community, prayed with the community, visited them. But in the words of social workers, in the words of anthropologists, they were just being there among the people. So at the end of our immersion program, I said, Sister, why don't we start developmental programs? Why don't we start livelihood or cooperative projects so that we can help the farmers? And I dropped a statement. Sister, we cannot preach to empty stomachs. And the sister looked at me tenderly with great fondness, but also sternly. And she said to me, So, remember this. You can preach to empty stomachs if the stomach of the preacher is as empty as his parishioners. There lies the problem. We are not able to liberate our suffering brothers and sisters because our lives are too comfortable, our stomachs are so full, and our sleep is so convenient, and our rest is so available. We can preach to empty stomachs if the stomach of the preacher is as empty as his parishioners. The problem of the rich man was not that he did not do anything. It was that he was blind. He was blinded by his riches. Charity urges us. The charity of Christ urges us to help, but not only to help, to empower, but not only to empower, to set free. The Lord has come to set captives free. The Lord has come to set us free from the bondage of sin. And this mission has been entrusted to us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, at the sunset of our lives, we will be judged according to love. God bless you.